Now let's learn about a digital potentiometer. This is the Digilent PMOD DPOT board. It's based on the analog devices AD5160. I'll review the features and SPI interface as well as the principles of operation and design equations. Here's the digital potentiometer that's included in the NI MyRio Embedded Systems Kit. It's the Digilent PMOD DPOT device. It's based on the analog devices AD5160. Conceptually, you can think of this device as the usual three-terminal potentiometer with fixed value resistance between the two end terminals and then a movable wiper in between. Except in this case, we use a digital value to control the wiper position. This is an 8-bit word. That means we have 256 wiper steps or wiper positions. Taking a look at some of the features, it's based on the SPI serial bus with 25 megahertz maximum clock rate. My Rio is only 4 megahertz, so we're fine there. 8-bit resolution, as I mentioned earlier. Linear variation. Supply voltage can be anywhere from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. Get some of the appropriate terminology here for the terminals. The resistance between terminals A and B is 10 kilo ohms, plus or minus 15%. And you can either use it as a rheostat, that is, taking the resistance between the wiper and either of the end terminals, that would be R sub W B or R sub W A, or you can set this up as a voltage divider. I'll show you what I mean by that. If we take the two end terminals A and B and connect a voltage across those terminals, then the wiper terminal has a voltage VW which is equal to the point-to-point -point resistance between W and B, that's RWB, divided by the end-to-end -end resistance, RAB. And we multiply that by the voltage that's applied across the terminals, A and B. Now this equation assumes that you have negligible resistive loading on terminal W. That's an important requirement. I'll point out two cautions when you're using the device as a voltage divider. First and foremost, this voltage VAB must be limited to whatever you are using for your supply voltage. Whatever value you choose, you cannot exceed that value. Also, make sure that you do not apply a voltage when the chip is unpowered. This is also important. You run the risk of damaging the potentiometer otherwise. There's a number of applications for a digital potentiometer. We can think of it as a useful device to replace a mechanical potentiometer. You could use it as a digital gain control for an amplifier, or you could also use it as computer-based nulling or zeroing of a sensor bridge circuit, for example. Now let's review the pinout for this device. The analog devices chip is located here, by the way. Power and ground are located on pins 5 and 6 of the J1 connector down here. These pins are associated with our SPI connections, serial clock and serial data in. This is a no connect, and this pin number one is the chip select for the board. The SPI can be controlled from the MOSI and clock pins from MyRio, and you can use a digital output to control the chip select. These three pins, the A, the B, and the wiper, are located on the screw terminal connector and are also available as solder points on the board. You can take your pick, whichever one is more convenient. The chip select line also includes a 10K pull-up resistor to VCC. Now here's how you write the 8-bit value into the device. First, the chip select line, which is normally being pulled high or set high by your digital output, we need to drop that low to select the analog device's chip. Then you write the 8-bit value to SBI making sure that you have most significant bit first. Then you raise the chip select high again to latch that value internally inside the analog devices chip, and this sets the wiper position for the potentiometer. Now let's take a look at the inside of the digital potentiometer to get a better handle on how this thing actually works. For this discussion, I'll be using a two-bit version and giving you an equivalent circuit and then I'll show you how that scales up to the 8-bit version. Here I have four resistors, each a value of RAB divided by four. That is, the end-to-end -end terminal 
resistance is split up into four equal valued resistors. Next, I have an array of four ideal switches, each with zero ohms resistance. Now, each switch, in fact, has about 60 ohms, and I'm summarizing that with this single resistor right here. Call that R sub W. Now, each of these is actually an electronically controlled solid state switch, and it's operated by a latch that stores, in this case, the 2-bit value, 2-bit digital value, and that selects exactly one switch to close using the decoder. I'll show you an example. Supposing the digital value was zero, that would select or decode to this line right here. When that's active, the switch is closed, and we see a path going from B to W with no resistance except that wiper resistance, RW. Going from A to W, we see the entire chain of resistors plus the wiper resistance, RW. So one is small and one is large. Now suppose the digital value was two. That would close the switch, open the one down here. Now B goes through two resistors on its way out to W. That would look like two times REB divided by four. Going from A to W, we actually get the same result. Two of those one quarter AB resistors plus RW. Now notice as we go from zero to two, that the RWB value went up, that is the wiper to B terminal. However, the other one we see it decreasing. All right, it started as a larger value and now it's half that value. And it turns out that this particular two, in fact, is the digital value D. Remember when D was zero, we saw no contribution from RA, RAB. In general, then, the wiper resistance to B terminal is this equation, and the wiper resistance to A terminal is this equation. So we get two resistances, and they go in opposite directions as D increases or decreases. Now, for the 8-bit version, you would simply scale this up. You'd have 256 resistors and 256 switches. Now, to finish things up here, I'd like to give you the design equations that you can use for the digital potentiometer. When you're using the device as a rheostat, that is, as a single resistance, then you have one equation for the resistance between the wiper terminal and terminal A. This is with the digital value varying between 0 and 255. And here's the equation going from the wiper to terminal B. Here's a quick tip. When measuring the resistance with an ohm meter, I suggest that you connect either terminal A or B to the my real ground, and this stabilizes the measurement somewhat, at least in my experience. The other design equation is for voltage divider mode. In this case, I have my terminals A and B connected to my supply voltage VDD, and I'm looking at the voltage that appears at the wiper with respect to ground. This is a voltage divider arrangement. That means we take the wiper to B resistance divided by the total resistance AB and multiply that by the supply voltage. Substituting in that expression for RWB, looks like we have some cancellation here. The numerator would still be associated with this piece, however, and we can simplify this a bit as D over 256 plus the wiper resistance divided by the total resistance. Now, if you like, you can compare 60 against 10,000 and realize that that's a fairly small value. And if you like, you could approximate that as zero and write the even more simplified expression as simply the digital value divided by 256 times your supply voltage.